Hello and welcome to Path Painter. Path Painter is a path creation system for Unity 3D terrain. Path Painter allows you to make roads, ramps, paths and rivers and makes path creation a breeze. So when you first install Path Painter, you'll get a documentation directory where you've got your quick start guide and your detailed documentation. We highly recommend you take a moment to review these. And then you've got your editor directory where you have the DLLs and then a demo directory where you have a demo scene which you can practice painting paths on. So to open Path Painter, go Window, Path Painter and Path Painter. While we're here, we also have access to Path Painter tutorials, our Discord channel where you can come and have a chat and ask some questions, and our support system where you can lodge a ticket. We also have access to our other assets and you can also review Path Painter if you like it. So let's start Path Painter. To open Path Painter, we select Window, Path Painter, Path Painter. Now, one thing with Path Painter is if you don't have the terrain loaded, then Path Painter won't show its interfaces. So just select your terrain and Path Painter will interpret what's in the terrain and load it all up for you. Okay, so let's go through the Path Painter interface. Window, Path Painter, Path Painter, select your terrain, and here's the basic interface which is grouped into three major sections. We've got the Paint interface, the Map Scalar interface, and the More interface. So in the More interface we have access to our tutorials, our community and support, and information about procedural worlds. Then in the Map Scalar interface we have the ability to change the terrain's height map and splat map resolution. You can increase or decrease these to get more or less definition in the way Path Painter paints onto the terrain. And then we have our path interface. So we have our brush settings, which includes a brush size, embankment size and elevation. We have the type of embankment, like the curve of the embankment. And then whether or not we want the path to follow the terrain or to draw a nice ramp between the terrain. And then our texture settings and vegetation settings. And finally, we have some information about the hotkeys and the current status of the hotkeys. So let's paint a path and explore what the different settings do. So the first thing I'm going to do is select paint mode, and then I'm going to choose the textures that I want to paint. So in this case, I might paint a, a rocky gravel texture surrounded by a rocky embankment. And as I move over the terrain, you can see the paint tool. So I'm going to hit the left mouse button and drag, and you can see we're actually painting in a little path. As we're doing that, we've actually switched off all of the grass and the other trees so that you can see what it's doing. Now let's just go in a little bit and have a look at what we've done here. So this path is still actually selected and what we can do is we can hit the shift key to see how different settings would affect that. So let's change the brush size. So I'm hitting the shift key and as I increase the brush size you can see the size of the path and the brush increasing. Let's change the embankment size so we can make that embankment a bit bigger or smaller. And then let's change the elevation so you can see I'm actually raising the path above the terrain or sinking the path into the terrain. So let's just raise it slightly, maybe make that embankment a bit bigger. And we can also, if I actually make it a bit bigger again, like quite large and a bit wider, you can see the effect of the different curves as well. So now we've got a rounded edge, quite a rounded edge, more of a concave edge and just a straight flat line. So let's make it concave. And then the next thing I want to do is change how we're working with the terrain. So we can, if we set our elevation perhaps back down to around zero, and then instead of following the terrain, draw a ramp, what we'll actually get is a nice ramp from the topmost point of your terrain down to the bottommost point. Finally, what we can also do is we can just switch in different textures. We can change the strength at which the different textures are drawn in. 
and we can also change whether or not we want to draw the trees and also how far around the path we want to clear the trees and vegetation. Okay, when you're done with that, just hit the path painter again and it's done. In this next example, what we'll do is we'll extend this natural waterway back inland. Instead of digging a path above the terrain, we're going to dig a path down below and into the terrain. So I'm going to turn on Path Painter and I'm going to select the surface texture as my sand and I'll still have my wall texture and I might set the elevation to say minus five and then just going to click and drag and what you can see is I'm actually driving the river inland. Now this is, this last one should still be selected so I can change how this works. So I hit shift and I can make it a bit wider and the embankment, make that a bit steeper if I wanted to or a bit flatter and the elevation, I could just drop it down a bit further. The other thing I can do is here it's more of a ramp from the top down to the bottom but we could actually just follow contour of the terrain but I think for this sort of thing you're possibly better off just doing more of a ramp and there you have a nice river. So in this next example what I'm going to do is create a little embankment along our river. So to do that I'm going to make sure we're in paint mode again. I'm going to make our brush size relatively small and instead of digging into the terrain we're going to extrude out of the terrain and just paint it along here. Add a little bit of interest to it. And I can just continue that on And then what I can do is just further modify it and perhaps change that embankment so it works a bit better, maybe increase it a little bit more, make it follow the terrain more naturally and then change the texturing. So you can see you can get some rather cool effects just by experimenting. If you don't like what you did, you can hit the Control Z button and undo it. And I'll hit it again and undo the other one. There we go. So let's try that again. I'll just draw along here. Just hit the shift key to continue. Cool, so now we've got a little embankment. In this example, what I'm going to do is create a little area at the top of our hill for a little fort. So the brush size is quite small, I'll make that a bit larger. I'll set our height to be zero, our ele elevation. We'll leave the embankment as it is for the moment. And let's just draw our little area here. So now we've got a rather cool little flat area. We could go shift and just continue that on if we wanted to. We can make a gradual area going up here. And then what we can do is just muck around with our brush size until we get this looking the way we want. We can play with our embankment and also the shape of our embankment. So let's say we're happy with that. Now what I want to do is draw a little path down out of this. So I'm going to make my brush size quite a lot smaller. And I'm just going to click and draw my path.
Let's continue that on. Okay. Now that's quite raised. It's actually quite a cool little path. You could still muck around with it a bit more. So let's just change, say, our elevation. See, we're modifying the whole thing. And we can change our embankment. Make it a bit of a wider sort of path here. Change the general sizes. And then perhaps down here, what we'll do is we'll draw a, a path going through our trees and I'll show you how you can control the different borders that you get from that. All right, so let's do that. I'm gonna hit the shift key and I'm gonna continue to draw this into our environment. At the moment, it's doing a very level path a little from, from the top all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to make that follow the terrain a little bit more. There's a little bit less level. There we go. Now that we're down in amongst the trees, let's have a look at this rather cool ability to vary how far away the trees and draw and the grass are drawn from our path. Let's go clear trees and increase the distance. Now what's actually happened is there's an apply changes button. I'm just going to hit those changes and you notice as I keep as I change things the apply changes button comes in again. So we've done that. And then what we might do is let's just look at our grass here. Let's bring the grass in a bit closer. You can see the grass coming back or alternatively we can drive the grass further out and we can also choose the different noise function we use to get rid of the grass. If we wanted to make our little path here a bit wider we could do that. So again hitting that shift key we made our path down a bit wider. So you can see you can get a lot of control over how these paths are made. In this next example, I'm going to do something a little bit more sophisticated. What I've done is I've applied CTS to the terrain and I've added in a new rocky path texture. I've set the CTS profile to being a advanced profile. This will work on advanced or tessellated. And what we're going to use is texture blending to blend the rock texture into the terrain. So let's just draw our path. Might make it a bit wider and just draw a nice little path here. Okay. Now I'm just going to go and modify the edges of this path a little bit. So I'm going to hit the shift button. And let's change our embankment down. I don't really want much of an embankment here. Can make it bigger. I don't want less of one. Maybe just raise it slightly. And what we're going to do is change the strength of which the texture is being applied. And with the texture blending, what you can see is the different texture coming through. So that seems to be about the right strength. And now I can go into CTS itself and modify how this is being blended together. So we've added a height to our texture here. Just pop that out of the road. Come back to CTS. It's still in the road here. Come back to CTS. And what I'm going to muck around with is our height map contrast. So you can see you just you can get the full strength, or we can just start to mix things up a little bit. Maybe change the depth a little bit more, maybe decrease it. And then maybe increase the tile size so we get larger rocks. But what we've got now is a nicely blended rocky path into our terrain.
You can experiment until you get that just right for how you want it to look. Okay, hope you enjoy Path Painter.